on, everyone. I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and learn about how Norwegians handle darkness. I just looked up. When does the sun go down in Oslo, Norway? And I am absolutely shocked to see 3.35 p.m. 3.35 p.m. Sunset. Darkness. I, I, I cannot believe that. That is... That is so much, <laughs> that is so much earlier than I ever thought. Um, I know depending on where you live in Norway and what time of year it is in Norway, you can get interesting fluctuations in how much sun you get and depending on how north and south in Norway, but even somewhere like Oslo, I did not know it was possible for sunset to happen as early as three o'clock, 3.35. Um, <laughs> Uh, Americans could never. Americans could never do this. Um, I mean, that is just so early. That feels like you've barely got your day started and it, it's already dark out. Like for a lot of Norwegians, don't you uh, get done with work? You get home from your job and it's just dark out already? That's got to be difficult. It could be depressing. I feel like your whole day is gone. I don't know how Norwegians do it. So I'm interested in watching this video here featuring a Norwegian who is going to talk about 10 different tips for surviving the Norwegian darkness. And I am very fascinated by this. I, I want to see what these tips are because this does seem necessary. You got to find ways to entertain yourself to stay, I don't know, positive. Because it's very easy to stay sort of negative or depressed if it's Literally dark outside, so early in the day. I can't believe that. Uh, let's take a look. Taking vitamin D supplements is something that a lot of people don't really take seriously. Oh my god, that's a really good point. I I, I never I never thought about this from a from a health standpoint. Yeah, because humans need sunlight, and it needs to hit your skin to to ma maintain health. So you can become vitamin D deficient if you're not getting a lot of sunlight. That's, I never even thought about that. That Norwegians probably have to take vitamin D, right? So obviously during this time you don't get sun exposure, which right. is the main source of vitamin D. So taking vitamin D supplements is really, really, really important. Right. Winter depression is a real thing. And it- Winter depression. Right, so this is like around the winter time when the, the sun can start going down very, very early. That's true here in the United States. But when, when, the sun da when the sun goes down before six or seven, that's when we start complaining. That's when Americans are like, whoa, hold up. This is unbearable. Which is why when I saw 3.35, I was mind blown. That's, un that's unbelievable can actually be caused by lack of vitamin D. Motivation mm. comes from doing and not waiting around for it. To mm. feel that burst of motivation, you need to start doing. So give yourself a plan and follow through with that plan, even though you don't feel very motivated to start doing it. This is really, this is really good advice. This is important, like mental health advice. I swear, maybe Norwegians are very good at dealing with this because it's something that Living in Norway, you probably have grown up with. You know kind of how to handle it. You know what to expect. But as an American, this is difficult for me to even think about. If it's just dark out all the time, you probably feel like, oh, I, I don't even need to go outside today. I don't have, or literally, you're feeling depressed. I don't have motivation to do anything. It's so dark and gloomy. I'm just going to sit around and watch YouTube. <laughs> but seriously... Uh, finding motivation to get up and do stuff, uh, that's got to be difficult. So you got to make yourself do it. You got to make yourself have motivation. But you will feel motivated once you have started. Right. Get out in nature. This is a uh, real important one. Okay. It's very easy to, when it's pitch black outside, to just kind of curl up inside and cozy up by yeah, your yeah. fireplace if you have one. Yeah. I don't have one, but you know what I'm saying? Months and months and months of that, because the winter here is really, really long. That's gonna affect- What is this? Oh. 
Oh, her camera stopped recording. <laughs> that's, uh, that's too bad, but I understand what she's saying. Um, I suppose you can try to get outside uh, before darkness comes. If you can, maybe on the weekend, you get outside before the darkness at 3 or 4 p.m. comes. That is crazy. Uh, or maybe, maybe Norwegians go outside and enjoy nature, even if it's a little dark out. Maybe, is that something you can do as well? I don't, whatever you gotta do to just, because you do have to get outside. You can't just stay, hold up for months and months at a time. That would be quite difficult and, and a bit sad, I imagine. Weeks and months of chilling inside will affect your mental health. Get out into nature. Two of my tips got cut out of this video. Being social in whatever way possible. Yes, yes, that kind of goes with getting outside. Being social, uh, interacting with other humans. I could see that as being one of the number one things you need to do to stay positive and survive the darkness and winter in Norway. See other human beings. Because I, I know for sure as an American, when it's, when it's dark out or, or rainy out or cold out, a lot of us, even though it's a lot, even though it's a lot more mild here in America, a lot of Americans are, are guilty of staying inside anyway. Even if it's a lot, it's actually probably a lot uh, more tolerable than in Norway. And then you just don't end up seeing people, which is a great way to, you know, be positive and enjoy the day seeing people. Um, so being social and having something to look forward to. Got it. Easy to want to kind of turn the lights down, light a few candles, cozy up with a blanket in front of the TV. But you can't do that every single day, mm. all day long for half the year. That's not going to work. So. Oh my God. Is this half the year? Hold up. Now, now we're getting into territory I don't completely understand about Norwegian winter. Can winter in Norway be six months? And then how, how soon does the sun go down? Is 3.30 like the most? Tell, don't tell me that the sun goes down sooner than 3.30. Can the sun, can the sun go down sooner than 3.30 even? And how long does this last? I am, um, this is giving me anxiety even though I don't even experience this. Just hearing about this and thinking about dealing with it uh, gives me a little anxiety. Uh, I gotta admit, wow, uh, I have a lot of respect for Norwegians. Um, you have such a beautiful country, beautiful landscape, beautiful society. And then I feel like this is like one of the things that you kind of have to pay for with that is the climate. Um, but I think there are really great ways to deal with it that Norwegians are good at. And, and this list kind of touches on that. To kind of really brighten it up inside as much as possible during the day while you're ah. working until like six o'clock, whatever, a time that's reasonable to actually lay down on the couch, put on the TV, eat some snacks and chill okay so so she's saying literally brighten up your home make your home like daytime make your like make it feel like sunlight or so or you know upbeat positive bright inside your house and that will kind of simulate you know a little bit the the feeling of like a, a sunny positive day kind of I, I think that's good advice i think that's very important to keep staying productive, motivated, happy, and mm -hmm. sane. And that leads me to the next one, and that is don't sleep the daylight away. Ah. When it is brighter outside, make sure that you're up, that mm -hmm. you are experiencing that light. I think that... I was wondering about this. I, I was thinking it might be difficult if you have a job, but when you can, when you're not at work, get up and ex take advantage of the daylight while it's still light outside. That's... That's kind of the only actual way you can experience genuine daytime, light time, sun in Norway during these times. You have to take advantage when it's up and out. That really is just telling your body that it's daytime now. Now it's time to be awake. Now mm -hmm. it's time to stay active, see people work, right. do stuff. 
eat, then it's just easier for the rhythm of your body to know when it's day and when it's night, which... Oh, I could see your body getting so confused by this. If you're, cause your body has biological mechanisms that can like detect if it's bright or dark. And when it's dark out, it, it makes you sleepier. It, it, your body is saying, oh, it's nighttime. It's time to stay in and rest. And uh, you, you don't want to be doing that at 3.30 p.m. though. Wow. Really is difficult during this time. As I said earlier, I'm really tired yeah. compared to what I was uh, during summer here. Right. And I sleep much more. But if I kind of slept away when it's a bit lighter outside, right. um, that would be even harder. Yeah. Don't end the day just because it's dark. This right. goes kind of hand in hand with the previous two that I mentioned, but it's very easy to just give up when it's dark, you know? This is what I was wondering, like, can you can you go outside and hike or, or something even when it's dark? Is that okay? Sounds like it could be a little dangerous, but what she's saying is even if it's dark, don't necessarily stop everything you're doing. You can still go see people, you can still go out, go to the store, take a walk, Whatever you have to do, or if you're inside your home, keep active inside your home. Just because it's dark doesn't mean it, you have to stop everything. And uh, nor, nor would you want to so early in the day. It would feel very unproductive, uh, w like winding down and stopping everything uh, at 3.30 or, or whenever the darkness comes along. Like a normal day to most people in the world is like you wake up it's bright outside you come home from work it's still bright you yeah. do a few things with your kids with your family friends and then it gets yeah. dark and then the day is kind of over right right you chill a little bit and then you go to bed that mentality won't work <laughs> during this time of the year in parts of the world well i mean this is it's crazy it's all stuff that i really just take for granted Again, even right now, uh, when winter is coming, it's getting colder here. Um, the worst it seems to get is dark around 5.30 or something, you know, and that's, that's the worst it gets. And it's not like that for very long. And I think we kind of take that for granted because uh, it, it's such a short, short time of year here where it gets dark that early. And America, we, we really complain about it uh, a lot. And I, I never really appreciated that it's a lot more difficult in other parts of the world, like Norway, actually. The where it's dark 24-7, so just make another mentality of from that o'clock until that o'clock is where it's day, and from that o'clock until that o'clock is when I chill, yeah. and then during the night I sleep. Right. Obviously, what you eat is going to affect your mood, how you mm. feel about yourself, right. and your energy levels right. to make sure that you don't just eat snacks and cozy food, <laughs> which is very tempting. Cozy food. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say, like, why would darkness make you eat worse? And it does have something to do with getting cozy, bundling up in a blanket, watching TV. That does kind of encourage you to snack and eat unhealthy food, like convenient food. And so there's a lot of willpower involved here. Norwegians have to have a lot of self-control and willpower to, to make themselves healthy and have mental health during this time. Like, actually, actually, I never even thought about it in this way before. This is really interesting to think about. Again, when it's like cozy outside, it's a storm, it's completely dark, you have lit some candles, it's very easy to want to just eat snacky food and also right. to grab right. something on the go. Because again, yeah. with less motivation during winter, it's not very tempting to stand in the kitchen for a couple of hours to cook up a good meal. Right. But just know the importance. Oh my gosh, Americans would be in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Because us Americans, we already stay inside and do nothing. Even if it's a sunny, warm day, a lot of Americans do nothing and eat snack food anyway. Let alone, if it was like this, America would just collapse. <laughs> we would just all collapse and, and pass away from snack food and bundled up in blankets all the time. <laughs> importance of it, try to meal prep, and that will definitely make a difference to your energy levels, how you sleep at night, how mm. you wake up the next morning, and right. kind of your entire 
day right. and cycle. Right. And my last tip is being creative. And I mean this in two different ways. Okay. One of them being being creative, having a hobby, draw, paint, just yeah. use your creativity. We're creative beings, no matter if you consider yourself a creative person or not. This is, this is just good advice in general, I think. But especially, especially if you're going to be forced to stay indoors a lot of the time because it's cold or dark, um, have a hobby. Don't just watch TV. Um, <laughs> it, it's kind of funny to me because I, I, you're watching a YouTube video right now, and I'm happy about that. I'm glad you are watching this YouTube video. But also, besides YouTube and television and gaming and stuff, you should have like something that's a little more active, I guess, especially if it's already dark so early in the day. Getting your hands busy, just being really engaged and involved in something that you do, doesn't matter really what it is, mm -hmm. just something that lightens up your day, something that you think is fun, right. something that gets you engaged. Yeah, and, and that gives you like a, sort of a positive mental health, like it, it's a boost where you feel like you've done something for the day. The day hasn't just slipped by and you've done nothing. Feels like you've done something and taken advantage of the day, even if it's not bright out. So that was that one. And the other thing that I mean by being creative is find ways to spice things up. Ah. To make your days more fun and entertaining. And okay. this also applies to the whole lockdown of the world right now, the whole pandemic. How can you, when you're staying home all day, you're by yourself or with... Oh man, this was this was filmed during the pandemic, which must have been like double, I mean, I guess you're already having to stay home or, or not go out as much because it's cold and dark. And then maybe you have to stay home because of like quarantine back when this was filmed. So it was like double duty back then even. That's pretty crazy, but I, I understand what she's saying. Be creative. Find creative ways to entertain yourself, get together with friends, figure out ways to simulate an active, positive day. Because you have to counteract the, the feeling of the darkness so early in the day. You have to counteract it somehow. One person, two people, or maximum five people, whatever the case is where you are, find ways to do things a bit different. Mm -hmm. As I said, make like a cinema set up at home. It can literally be, be from your Mac, watching a movie from your Mac. Right. Something that I'm doing tomorrow is I invited some of the um, children in the neighborhood to walk oh. with me along this island where we live and we're gonna pick up trash together. Whoa, that's amazing. Wait, what? I, I'd never hear about someone doing that in America. That's awesome, yeah. If you can go out and do community service or something to kind of have something to do during the day, that's that's amazing. And of course, we're going to wear gloves. We're going to stay one meter wow. apart and take precaution and stuff because yeah. of the pandemic. It's a creative way of doing something different, getting outside, spending time with people in a safe way, of course. And it's also beneficial for everyone living on this island and the planet and the animals and yeah so yeah, yeah that was the last one being creative i would love okay wow um that's fascinating i gotta say this whole topic is so interesting to me because it really is a bit difficult for me to relate to but i really appreciate like this whole side of norwegian life and norwegian culture i don't feel like i ever truly understood how difficult it can be this video was by Cornelia Grismo, and I gotta give it a like, because that was very good. Those were 10 very good tips, and very necessary tips, and of ways to cope uh, and survive. And it, re it really is almost survival. Uh, surviving the, the Norwegian winter, or in darkness and cold. Uh, you really do have to get creative and be, be pretty aware that's the other thing. You got to be pretty on top of this, pretty aware of the darkness and almost have a plan of how to stay active and productive and positive and all those things, which I, I never even thought about here in the United States. Uh, it's not really something we have to worry about as much, um, but <laughs> I, I can't really imagine this 
but it is fun trying to imagine this and seeing this whole different point of view. It, it's, it's honestly fascinating. So I, I enjoyed this quite a bit. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment, perhaps with your thoughts on darkness in Norway and how to cope with darkness in Norway. Uh, that'd be really interesting to hear about. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Norway and Norwegian culture, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.